Okay, we're working on intermediate algebra, section 2.2. This starts on page 68 of your textbook. All right, so the topic is solving systems of linear equations by graphing. Uh, we are going to use a graphing calculator. However, I do not have the ability to um, record myself using the graphing calculator for now. So I'll graph by hand here on this recording, and we will use a graphing calculator in class. So that means when you come to class, you need to bring Texas Instruments 83 or 84 plus. If you don't own one, you can check one out from the library or the depot, but please bring it to class with you or you will not be able to learn how to graph uh, using the calculator. All right. So uh, when you're solving any kind of linear equations, we talked about this kind of on the last video, there are three options for your solution and only three. Either the equations show parallel lines, which means they have the same slope, and if the, the equations show the same slope, the lines are parallel, there will be no solution. If the equations actually turn identical, and you can kind of see that a little bit here in your book, uh, these equations actually are identical. That means they are the same line and there will be infinitely many solutions. If the equations are not parallel or identical, then they will intersect at one point. Uh, this is some pictures here of what happens on the graphing calculator. And like I said, we'll review this in class or you can check out the graphing calculator yourself and go over it, but we will review it a little bit in class. And then we will uh, show where the graphs of our two equations are and we will have to identify where those two lines intersect and again your calculator can help you with this or you can do this manually all right for example one on page 69 the directions tell us to solve by graphing okay so when you're solving by graphing where's the system the system is 7y minus x equals negative 63 and y equals 1 7th x plus 2. All right, to solve by graphing, we need to find whether these two lines are parallel, whether they are actually the same line, or whether they intersect. So no solutions, infinitely many solutions, or one solution. And if they intersect, where they intersect, that's a one solution. So when you're solving by graphing, your equations must be in y equals mx plus b or slope intercept form. You cannot put them into the calculator or graph them until they are in that form. Uh, this second equation is in y equals mx plus b. You can see y equals mx plus b. You can see it here, the y is isolated. This first equation is not. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to take that first equation, 7y minus x equals negative 63. We're going to isolate that x. I'm sorry, we're going to isolate y to put it in y equals mx plus b. First thing is put x to the other side. So we'll have 7y equals x minus 63. Do not forget when you move a term to the other side, it changes its sign, so this is now positive. Now I want to isolate this y, so I'm going to divide by seven. When I do that, I wanna keep all these terms separated. So I have y equals, do not be fooled, this is not 7x. There's an invisible one here, so this is 1 7th x minus 63 divided by 7 is 9. So we're going to look at these two equations. This one, which is just a new form of this, and this one, because these are the two equations that we need to solve. The first thing I notice, y equals 1 7th x plus 2, y equals 1 7th x minus 9. They're not the same equation. They have different b's here, but they do have the same slope. When two lines or equations have the same slope, that means they are parallel. So lines that are parallel, because we're trying to solve, have no solution. No solution. Lines are parallel. Um, and this is your answer here. Um, in my class, now some teachers are okay with you just saying there's no solution here. 
in my class, I want you to tell me why there's no solution or how these two lines relate to each other. And of course, the key word here is that they're parallel. Um, so you're, you're identifying for me, there is no solution to this system because the lines are parallel. All right, for example two, again on the bottom of page 69 the directions say solve by graphing and the system says negative 9x plus y equals 1 and 8y equals 72x plus 8. To solve by graphing your equations must be in y equals mx plus b form. Um, the other point being that if we're going to use the graphing calculator, this is the only form you can input into the graphing calculator, which we'll practice in class. So both of these equations need to be solved for y. So we'll take the first one, negative 9x plus y equals 1. To isolate this y, the 9x needs to go to the other side, and that will change its sign. So we'll have y equals positive 9x plus 1. And the second one is 8y equals 72x plus 8. To isolate y here, we just need to divide everything by 8. Keep these two terms separated. So this turns into y equals 9x plus 1. Um, now, to compare or to solve these two equations, we first compare their form in y equals mx plus b. Um, I don't know if you notice this, but I do. y equals 9x plus 1, y equals 9x plus 1. These are the same line. When I graph them, those lines will lie right on each other. So if the two equations make the same line, your answer here is infinitely, well, it would be great if I could spell it, In then infinitely many solutions. Uh, the lines are the same. Um, you could say the lines lie on top of each other, or the lines coincide, or anything like that. But this is your solution here. Um, again, in my class, infinitely many solutions explains what the solution is and then I want you to explain to me why or what's happening with these lines to tell us that they are infinitely many solutions. Alright, example 3 is on page 70. It's again solved by graphing and the system says y equals negative x plus 5, y equals x minus 3. Again, if you're solving by graphing, your equations have to be in y equals mx plus b, or slope-intercept form. These two equations already are, so we can skip that step. We don't have to put, we don't have to isolate y. Uh, the first thing I notice is these slopes are not the same, so these lines are not parallel, and of course if their slopes aren't the same, they can't be the same line either. So we don't have the situation that we had in example 1 of no solutions. We don't have the situation that we had in example two of infinitely many solutions. So, you know, the only option left, if it's not no solution, it's not infinitely many solutions, is that there's one solution. And if there's one solution, that means the lines intersect. Okay, and it's your job to find out where the lines intersect. And this is where the graphing calculator is going to help you. Uh, once you put these into the graphing calculator, you're going to be, and we'll practice this in class, okay? You're going to see that these two lines, they'll be graphed to look like this and like this, and you'll be able to see that they intersect right here. And uh, if you press the keystrokes, and we'll, again, we'll talk about this in class, um, you can find the keystrokes on page 68, if you wanted to practice this on your own, the keystrokes on page 68 for your calculator will tell you the, uh, the ordered pair here where these lines intersect. 
So we're going to put that information into our final answer. The lines intersect at the point 4, 1. Now there are other ways to find what this uh, ordered pair is besides graphing. One of them is substitution and the other one is elimination, which we will learn in the next two sections. So if you don't have a graphing calculator, um, you can still graph these two uh, equations by hand. You know how to graph these. This is the B, the slope is negative one, so rise over run. This is the B, the slope is positive one, rise over run. But the only way to find this is by using a graphing calculator or substitution or elimination. If you haven't learned those yet, we'll learn them in the next sections. At example four is on page 71. Again, solve by graphing. The system says 3y equals x plus 3, y equals x minus 4. So right off the bat, we're going to uh, notice that this one is in slope-intercept form. It says y equals mx plus b, but this one is not. So we're going to have to put this one in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to pull it down here, 3y equals x plus 3. I need to isolate y, so dividing by 3. That gives me y equals 1 third x plus 1. So we're going to compare, or we're going to solve this equation, which is just another form of this one, and this equation. These are the two equations we need to solve. So first looking for how many solutions are there. Do they have the same slope? Are they parallel? No, they are not. Are they the same equation? No, they are not. So if they're not parallel, it's not no solution. If they're not the same equation, it's not infinitely many solutions. That leaves the only option of one solution. So we see there's one solution. That means that the lines intersect. And it's your job to find out where they intersect. Of course, you know, we're going to put these in the graphing calculator and all of that so that we can see the graph. Um, on the bottom of page 71, you can see, if you're trying to follow along, what happens when you graph these two lines. They come out like this and like this, and the intersection is here. Um, when we put them into the calculator, we'll find that the intersection is at 7.5 comma 3.5. Um, I will tell you that I prefer to not have decimals in my ordered pairs. I would prefer that you use this, uh, write these as fractions, which is seven and a half, three and a half. But again, we don't use mixed numbers. We use improper fractions. <laughs> so two times seven is 14 plus one is 15. So this is 15 over two and this is 6, 7 over 2. This is the proper way to write an ordered pair. Not with decimals, which is what your calculator is going to give you. Not with mixed numbers, but sometimes you have to get it here before you can get it here. So here's your, uh, your total answer. There's one solution. The lines intersect at these two points. Now I know right now you're watching thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know how she did that, how she got this graph. We are going to do this in class. Make sure you bring your graphing calculator. We will go over it in class so that you can feel comfortable with this. All right, example five on page 72 says solve by graphing. And the system is negative x plus y equals one, negative six x plus three y equals negative 21. Your first step, is to put these in slope-intercept form. So the first equation, negative x plus y equals 1, all I need to do is put this x term to the other side. So that gives me y equals x plus 1. The second equation, negative 6x plus 3y equals negative 21. Uh, first off, x term needs to go to the other side. So now it says 3y equals 6x 
minus 21, and then divide off this 3 to isolate y. So we have y equals 2x minus 7. So these are the two equations I'm solving. They are just new forms of both of these equations. Um, first, let's determine how many solutions there are. Do they have the same slope? No, they're not parallel. Are they the exact same equations? No. So there must be one solution. If they have the same slope, they're parallel, it will be no solution. If they're the same exact equations, they're the same lines, and it will be infinitely many solutions. But since both those situations are not true, that means there's one solution. And what does that mean about the lines? That means the lines intersect. OK, so uh, we can see the graph on page 72. We're going to put these into our graphing calculator when we get to class. The graphs look like this. You know, maybe I'll show you how to graph these by hand on this one, just so that you can see what happens if you don't have the calculator. For this equation, y equals x plus 1, the y-intercept is positive 1. So that would be right here. The slope is also positive 1. So this is a positive slope, so it's going uphill. So that means the rise is 1 and the run is 1. And so we'll go rise, run, rise, run. And that will put a couple more points here and here. So this line goes like this. That would be y equals x plus 1. To graph this one, uh, I think I'll use blue instead of red. Uh, the slope is 2. The y-intercept is negative 7. Rats, my graph is not quite big enough, so let's uh, scroll up a little bit. Extend my graph because I need a y-intercept of negative 7. That would be here. There's the y-intercept of negative 7. The slope is a positive 2. That means this line slopes also this way, positive this way, uh, 2. So the rise is 2 and the run is 1 uh, because as a fraction, 2 is 2 over 1. So the rise is 2 and the run is 1. So that would be here. And then we're going to count it again. Rise 2, run 1. So that would be here. Okay, so we need to connect the dots here, and that gives us a line that kind of goes up like this. It's hard to see where these two lines intersect. If you extend them, they intersect someplace way up here. Um, again, this is where your graphing calculator is helpful. Uh, you can see the ordered pair where these two intersect is 8, 9. 